Now, if you're new to image editing, you may not be familiar with the concept of layers, but layers are actually like transparent sheets that are laid on top of each other. It goes back to the old days of hand animation and cell animation, where animators created their images by taking layers of cellophane and laying them on top of each other and each different transparent layer had a different part of the scene on the cell or the transparent cell layer. Now, Photoshop Elements works in a similar way. Now, while the concept of layers might be new, once you get used to it, it's actually a great way to work and it's really pretty fun and pretty easy. So let's go ahead and talk about how to best work with layers. Well, the first thing you need to know is where the layer panel is. And the layer panel is going to be in your panel bin on your right side of the screen over here. And to bring it up, you go to Window, and then down here in the middle to Layers, or you can click F11. Click on that and that brings up your layer panel in the panel bin. Now also you might notice if we go ahead and turn that off on your bottom tool panel you have a little button that you click and it says layers. So click the layer button and that will also bring up your layer panel bin. And when you look at your panel bin what you'll see is you'll see a layer and it says background. But currently we only have one layer so it's only showing one single layer. But you can, in the panel bin, you can add layers, you can delete layers, and you can manage your layers simply from the panel bin. Now the first thing we want to do is we want to create a new layer. And this is easily done by just going up to this little button right here and it says create a new layer. And you just click on that and now you have a new transparent layer called layer one. Now if you look at your digital image, you don't see anything different. And the reason is because if you see these, this checkerboard pattern, that shows you that that layer is transparent. But when you go over here to the brush tool and you come onto your image and you start brushing, then now you have a scribble across your image and you're like, well, I just ruined my digital photo because I scribbled across it. Well, actually, that is going to exist only on the layer that you are currently on. And you can see that that's layer one. How do you see that? You see that because of this blue selection right here. If you're on the background layer, you get the blue selection across it. And like now you're on the background layer. Now you're on layer one. So whatever layer is highlighted in blue is the layer that you're actually working on. And that's important because a lot of times you'll be working on an image and you'll have several layers going at once and you can get confused and start working on the wrong layer which will really matter to you later on. So always know which layer you're working on. Now to get an idea of what the layer does, come down here and highlight your background layer. While you're on the background layer, let's show you something else and that's this eyeball right here. The eyeball is a toggle switch and what it toggles on and off is the layer visibility. As you can see it says indicates layer visibility. So when you click it and you get this red line through it, your background layer is now no longer visible. And now since it's no longer visible, you're only looking at the top layer which is layer one. And as you can see, your scribbles on there. So if you come back down to your background layer and turn it back on, you can go up to layer one you can turn that visibility off and you'll see that that scribble goes away. Now, I don't really like this scribble. It doesn't look very good, so let's go ahead and delete that. And you can delete a layer by just coming up to this trash can here and hitting the delete button. But before you hit the delete button, just realize that whatever layer you have highlighted, that's a layer that's going to be deleted. So make sure you have the right layer selected and go ahead and hit delete. Now as you learn to work with image editing programs, one of the things that you'll learn with time is that a lot of great effects can be created through the use of subtle adjustments made on multiple layers. And when you're working with layers, you'll find that with Photoshop Elements 12, you have the ability to create up to 8,000 layers in an individual image. 
Now, most of the time you're probably not going to need 8,000 layers. 20 will probably suffice. But as you get into more and more complicated images and more and more subtle changes in your images, you will find that you'll need to use more and more layers. So being able to work with those layers is pretty important. Now, a minute ago we showed you how to create a new layer by using the Create New Layer button. And we created a transparent layer by clicking on that button. And one thing to know is that when you make a new layer, the new layer will always be created on top of the other layers in your files. And the other thing to know about layers is that you're probably not going to want to keep it called layer 1. The more layers you get, the more confusing it can get. So being able to rename these layers is pretty important. And just to, and to be able to do it, all you have to do is come over here to the name, hover your mouse right over it, double click, and just go in and type the name that you want and we'll call this trance for transparency. Now in Photoshop Elements 12 you'll notice that you have layer up here on your menu bar and by clicking on that you will see that you have different ways to create new layers. You can create a new layer directly with Control shift n and if you click that you're going to get a new transparent layer exactly like you did with the button except for it's going to give you bring you into this dialog box where you can name it directly without it just popping up or additional options that you have in the layer menu is creating a layer from the background now when you're working in Photoshop Elements 12 one of the things that you'll notice is that whatever your image is when you open a, a digital image it's going to make that all on one layer and it's going to call it the background and that's not such a big deal, but you will notice that right here you have this little transparent looking box and a lock next to it. That's telling you this background layer is partially locked. Well, when it's partially locked, that means that you can't make all of the editing changes to the background layer that you may want to make. Well, how you get around that is you go ahead and go to Layer and do New Layer from Background. Click on that, name it background copy and hit OK and as you can see you now have this new layer from the background and it's no longer locked so if you have trouble with your background and, and you need a new copy that's not locked go up to layer background from layer now some other things that you can do in this layer menu is that you can duplicate a layer so if you have this background copy and you want a second copy of it to do an effect, go ahead and make a duplicate layer. And it's going to say background copy copy. So let's just change that to two. And now you can see that you have two copies of the layer. We actually don't need a background copy, so let's go ahead and delete that. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to make a new fill layer. And you may be wondering to yourself, why would I want to create a new fill layer? Well. As I mentioned earlier, a lot of the times when you're image editing, the best image edits are done doing multiple edits in thin, transparent layers. And one of the things that you may want to add is new fill layers. By having a new fill layer, you affect the entire image, but you do it in a way so that if you don't like it at any point in time, you can just throw away the layer. So let's show you how that's done. Now, first you just go up to Layer, New Fill Layer, and then you have choices. You can go with a solid color, a gradient, or a pattern. And if you go ahead and click solid color, go ahead and hit OK. And as you can see, it's going to ask you to pick a solid color. Now right now it's showing you the foreground color, but that's awfully, awfully dark. So let's add a little sunlight. And this is kind of like adding a filter to your photograph. So let's go ahead and add that orange color. And right now all you see is this big orange square. Now if you look up here, you'll see this box and it says normal. This is actually your blending mode. Remember down here in your brush panel, you had the ability to set blending modes there. You can do the same thing with a layer of your image. And you can change your blending mode from normal, which lets the background image poke through the layer a little bit. But that's really not enough. So next to the blending mode, you have the opacity. And the opacity, once again, is setting the opacity just for that specific layer. So when you're down here, 
as you can see, your blending mode went back to normal and your opacity is at 100. That's the blending mode and opacity just for the highlighted layer. So let's go up to this layer again and let's pull down the opacity to a level where it's just giving it a little bit of color. If you want to see that effect versus what it looked like before you did it, just come over to your visibility switch and turn that layer off and that shows you the darker and that shows you the lighter. Now if you don't like this effect at all, you could just turn around and trash it. First the layer mask and then the color fill. Now that we've talked about creating new transparent layers and creating new fill layers, there's one more layer type we want to talk about, and that's creating adjustment layers. Now, adjustment layers are often used by designers as a way to adjust the entire image. And to create an adjustment layer, you can go up here to the layer menu and do new adjustment layer, or you can come over here to this little box right there. It says create new fill or adjustment layer. So you can actually do either a fill or an adjustment layer from this button, but we're going to do an adjustment layer. And so go ahead and click that. And then that's going to give you a sub menu. And you can see here that your solid color gradient and pattern options are the top three options. Now those were all the same options that you had on the layer menu to new fill layer. Same three options. And then below those three options you have the options that Photoshop Elements gives you for adjustment layers. So let's go ahead and do a brightness and contrast adjustment layer. So now you get this dialog box for brightness and contrast and if you move your dialog box slightly to the right of your image you can start playing with your controls and adjusting your image while actually looking at it in real time. So let's make this a little more contrasty and let's turn the brightness up a little bit. Now when you're done, just close out your window by going to this X in the top right corner. And then if you want to change that effect later on, go to your layer thumbnail, click on that twice, and that will bring your dialog box back up so that you can continue to adjust it until you like it. And one of the great things that you can do in Photoshop Elements 12 is you can actually take two different photos and combine them into one picture. Well, the first thing that you need to do to do this is you need to select a second photo. Now, I already have some photos open. You can tell because you can see that on this bar across the top, that shows you all the open photos. And if you go and you select that, you'll see that there's a different photo and it's open. So I'm going to go to that, and then I'm going to select it. And you can use your rectangular marquee tool by grabbing that and going up to the top and selecting the whole thing. Then once you have that done, what you're going to do is you're going to control C or copy. And once you have that copied, you're going to go back to the image where you want to put in this second photo and go control V, which is paste, and paste that image on top. And you can tell if you toggle the visibility off that that other photo is right underneath it. Now let's talk about another thing just as a side note. You still have this adjustment layer here. You can bring this up above both layers by simply clicking and dragging that up. That's how you move your layers around. So now that we have this selected, let's go in and double click on the name and change it to foot. Come up here to your blending mode and set the blending mode for this particular layer. And I'm going to go with an overlay. And as you can see now, the two different images are blended together. And another thing that you can do, drop down your opacity level until you find something you like. And just like that, you're starting to create images from the different digital images you have and putting them together. Now, if you still want to refine this a little bit further, one of the things that you can do is you can come over and next to your rectangular marquee tool, you're going to find what's called the move tool. With the move tool, you have a couple of different options that you can do. You can grab the image and you can move it around until you get it into a place that you like. Or you can come up to these handles that are located around the photo and you can grab them and when you hover over them you see these little tiny arrows show up and that's showing you that you can actually resize the image by either pulling out 
we're pulling down to make the image smaller or larger. And then one of the things is, is that you've got this strange, your foot's in kind of a vertical alignment. You want that to probably be horizontal if it was looking more realistic. So when you come over here to this corner, you'll see that your arrows turn into rounded lines. And that means that you can rotate the photo by just clicking and dragging. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna rotate that photo like that. And then we're gonna grab the photo again and we're gonna move it down there. And that's how you start working with different images and layering them together.